I come over to Picturey, and not only am I getting live support at 11 o'clock at night, I'm also asked, hey, would you like to just hop on a screen share and we can look at this together? Today, I'm with Mike from Manover Machine, who's doing some incredibly innovative work against our API or application programming interface. You really won't believe what you're about to see. It's amazing. Mike, thank you for joining me. Hey, Pete, thanks for having me. Please tell us a little bit about what you're up to. Yeah, so um, I'm using Pictory uh, from a completely automated standpoint where I'm calling the API, I'm sending it an automated script um, where uh, a user on my end asks a question and then I've got an automated process that uses AI to answer the question. And then um, in another step, I'm actually generating um, the code that the Picturey API needs to uh, produce the video completely without my uh, interaction whatsoever. It sounds really clever. Are you able to show us perhaps a little bit what you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Let me kind of give you the quick tour here. So um, in my system, the way that it works is somebody comes to my website, which is Nuggets to Know. And uh, from here, they ask any question under the sun. Um, so this question is, why do men grow body hair? Um, this question was, uh, will people ever live on the moon? This question was, uh, why cows face the wind um, when they're staying in a field? And so um, my system runs first a filter to make sure that the question is appropriate. Um, so you can't ask anything that wouldn't be appropriate for like a six-year-old child to read. Um, and from there, I go in and I begin the process, right? So the first thing I do is I assign a category. Um, and what's great about Pictory is I can use all the default settings or I can kind of bring in some of my own stuff. Um, and so uh, by working with Shalindra, what he was able to show me how to do was I can actually populate an audio file on my own and then bring that audio file in. So um, like if I had a narration that I was doing, I could actually bring my own narration in and then apply video to that, um, which is essentially what I am doing, um, except my narration is being automated. So I assign the category, which for me assigns uh, the speaker or the host, right? Um, and then I um, go through, I look up, in a table, I look up the speaker information. Um, and so each category has its own host, just like if you were to watch a TV show um, or like a news episode, like you've got one person who's the investigative journalist, one person who's like the fashion correspondent, one person who's a sports person. That's essentially how my website works. Um, so you have all these different facts and each category belongs to a different person. So arts and entertainment, is done by Arturo and Arturo is this like Italian who's got a very bombastic way of speaking. So then if you go into health and wellness, uh, it's a different host, right? And so it was important to me uh, to have like a flexible API that I could send data into in different ways as opposed to just being chunky, right? Um, so I find the speaker information and then what I do is I generate the random fact um, and that random fact is influenced by the speaker information. So Part of the speaker information table is a style of speaking and like a linguistic approach. So the types of words that they'll use, um, it's not just the settings to their voice, it's how they speak. And that's really what makes a person, right? So um, it's the it's their voice, but then it's also the words that they use behind the voice. Um, and so all of my hosts have their very, very own unique way of speaking. Um so I create the title, I generate, uh, sorry, I create the fact, then I generate a title. Um, I have to go in and format some stuff. And then and this is where I create the WordPress post. Um, and then I begin the process of generating an image. Um, and so um, if you were to go and use MidJourney, you have to type imagine and then type some stuff out. Well, that's exactly what this does. So this creates the prompt um, based on the article that's written. And then I send it off uh, through another API that works with um, with Midjourney, and then I take uh, the post, the like the written fact, and I turn it into more of like a spoken word narration, if you will. Um, so in this step, I'm adding 
like natural pauses, um, things that make it sound more human so that it doesn't sound like it's a chat GPT script, right? Um, and what I found is in working with this AI stuff, it's a little bit like an assembly line where I can't go in and tell it from the very beginning, write this in this way, add these things and do it that way, right? Everything, if you give it too much instruction on the front end, it really kind of uh, comes out almost like a Mad Libs, right? Like it's very, um, you're just like throwing words in, but the the format's the same. By doing it this way where I kind of give it like freedom to create what it wants, and then I give it little nudges along the way, I find that the final output is a lot higher quality. Um, so then this is, a, it's called a sub zap. So um, I take the speakable post, I send this off to uh, Levin Labs, um, and that's where I reference uh, a lot of these settings that I have in the speaker information. So it defines what voice it's going to use, all of like the individual settings that Eleven Labs has. Um, and this comes back with an MP3 file. Um, I format the title a little bit more. I guess I have to do that a couple spots. Um, and then I'm just doing like um, cleanup stuff, right? So I'm writing a video description. Um, this is really where the magic happens, right? So um, I'm actually using ChatGPT to generate the API request for uh, Picturey, right? Um, so this right here is what the Picturey API call looks like. Um, and as you can see, um, so uh, up here, I'm kind of giving it some very general instructions. Um, and then here, I'm, I'm essentially... Like this is the setup for the file. Um, and so this voiceover is the 11 labs voiceover that I'm picking up in a previous step. And then down here, I have an intro for all my videos. So um, every video starts out with this little like jingle type thing. And then it gets into the meat of the content. So um, I'm telling my API, take that uh, video content that we generated and then fill out paragraph one, paragraph two, paragraph three, and it'll go in, it'll do however many are needed, right? Um, and then once it's done, here's the outro that I created. Um, so it fills in uh, these things, these these arrays here, um, as many as that are needed. And um, it took me a long time to actually get it to function properly. Um, but now I can get it to function every single time. Um, it doesn't fail and that was one of the good things about like how they've programmed the picture API to work is that um, it actually fails on the front end as opposed to like running and then having an error in it. I have to go in and check all my work. Like it, it says, Hey, you've, you've something's malformed in here. So um, that was really helpful from my standpoint. Um, here I get the picture token um, and then I send it to picture Um where it produces, uh, like it goes in, it does the entire video, right? It uh, merges my uh, narration. Um, Picture system goes out, finds the proper videos to put in the proper places. Um, it syncs the, um, the subtitles with my narration, which is pretty cool. It does background audio. It kind of does the whole thing for me. Um, and then uh, I pick up the video. So, um, the storyboard sort of gives me like a preview of what it's going to look like. Um, and then I take that, that, and then I send it to the render API where uh, this gives me like the full HD ready for showtime. Um, and then um, what I have in my system now is sort of like um, every once in a while, the, the render takes a little bit longer Um so it just kind of depends on how long the video is. But if the video is ready, uh, it goes down this path. If the video comes back and it's still processing, it essentially like waits another minute and then picks it up, which I have yet to have it take longer. I think it's, I think this is five minutes for it to process the whole thing. Um, so uh, then I upload it directly into YouTube. Um, I pick up the image that we created earlier. Um, I upload that into WordPress and then this is where I go in and I generate the YouTube um, thumbnail. Um, and then for my system, what I have 
is I reread the fact and then I generate a series of questions um, and then I generate an answer key. So um, you listen to the facts. It's almost like a little educational module, right? You listen to the fact and then you're asked questions that are relevant to that fact. Um, And then because parents don't want to have to listen to it, um, I put an answer key at the bottom and then uh, I generate a PDF that gets emailed to the recipient or whoever asked the question. And, um, and they get a, a PDF with the questions and the answer key. And then I put like a little scorecard on there. So um, you can keep track of what points your child is answered correctly. Then it all goes to YouTube, Pinterest, Facebook, all that stuff. And then I do some cleanup. So um, I can give you an example of one that I just did, if that works. Yeah, please do. Okay. So we'll skip over why men grow hair. Uh, we'll do... Pirates have peg legs. That was a question my son asked. Will AI, how will AI transform humanity was the question here. So this is a fact. um, And I believe the question here was, how will AI help humanity? Um, So here you have, here's the title. Here's the picture that goes with it. Um, Here is the entire write-up. And so what my system does is it takes this uh, text and it converts it into more like a narrated version, right? Um, And then it takes that narrated version and that's the payload the picture gets. Um, So I'll stop playing. And listen to the biggest in the world. All the clothes that is I also have seen is written that it's really the world. Well, hello there, my little tech friends. Let's dive into the digital depths of AI, shall we? Now, how will this tech titan, this silicon savant, this artificial intellect, help us humble humans, you ask? Let's embark on this discovery journey together. First stop, the bustling world of healthcare. So I won't won't play the whole thing. Um, But um, but so you get, uh, the user gets obviously an email, and that email... um, I'll just pull it up here. Hang on one second. Okay. So this is the email that, uh, this is the email the recipient gets. Um, so, um, um, this takes about from start to finish. It takes about eight minutes, I believe for them to get it. Um, so we say, Hey, it worked. Your answer's ready. Um, and so they can click this button. It takes them to the actual fact or they can click this. And, uh, this is, if you, if you listen to the whole video or you read the whole script, like you can answer all of these questions. Um, and then down here uh, are the answers. Um, and then, so I started doing this with my son. I have an eight year old little boy. And, um, when I first did it, I just had the questions, right. Um, and he was really, really bored and, uh, a day or so went by and he was playing this game called Roblox and he was sitting there banging on uh, this thing in the game. And, and like every time he'd hit it, little points would pop up. And it didn't look fun. And I asked him, I was like, Mikey, what are you doing? And he goes, oh, dad, I'm just getting points. Every time I do this, I get points. And I was like, oh, well, maybe I should figure out a way to add points to this. So uh, I put this totally arbitrary scorecard on here. And uh, I will do a question to ask my son, how can AI help doctors in healthcare? And then he'll answer it, and then he'll look at me and he'll go, "How many points did I get? How many points did I get?" And uh, so I, I created this game. He absolutely loves doing these questions. Then we'll do one, and then I want to do another one and another one. So um, then I had this little QR code with the idea being that, like, next time we go on a road trip, I can print off a couple of these. My wife can sit in the front seat. She can scan the QR code, uh, and then we have the questions, the answers. And, you know, it's a fun, you know, five, 10 minute little game that we can play. So, Love it. um, Love it. so, um, so yeah, back to, back to the picture API, um, the, um, it then sends all of the stuff up for me, um, where I then store it in YouTube and then embed the video back into, um, back into my website where it all gets posts, uh, posted, to my website and then shared across the internet. So, um, and it, yeah, it it was a lot of, um, like why I don't mind showing people the secret sauce. Um, 
I hope other people do this. I think this is super cool. I would love to see other people do it better than me. Um, I think that there's probably ways to make it more efficient where my system um, sends all the data in more quickly. Um, one thing that is nuts is how fast the Picture API works. Um, so um, originally I was sending it in and then I think I was waiting like 10 minutes just because I assumed that it took that long, but it's super fast. Um, the The preview comes back uh, in less than a minute, which I don't understand how that works. Um, but it comes back like almost instantly. And then, uh, and then it renders like a full HD high quality video, um, within a couple minutes. I think it's like three minutes that I get it. So, um, if, if you're stressed about waiting three minutes for an HD video to render, I think you got other stuff to worry about. So, um, but it's, it's super fast and, um, it's really stable, um, but again, I think the thing that makes it stand out the most is just the the support aspect, um, and uh, you know the ability to um, get on Discord and ask questions to the community um, is incredible. The fact that um, the people that actually build the platform are in there helping people answering questions—you um, got to let that guy sleep. Uh, he he works really late, uh, and a lot of times, like I'll go to bed. And um, he'll still be online, and then I'll wake up in the morning and I'll have an update about what happened while I was sleeping. So um, it's it's really cool to be uh, on this side of a company that's working so hard, as opposed to the opposite, where um, in you know the the company I was using prior, I couldn't get support. They were you know um, ten seven to ten days to get back to tickets. Picture has just said, hey, we're going to provide incredible support. And they're standing by that. And I appreciate that. So a big shout out to Shalendra, who's uh, putting the hours in for this. Of course, there is a, a team behind it uh, building it. This is an industrial strength API. You know, we're not messing around here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And um, again, like one of the things that has been really cool is um, it, it is a new company. It's a, oh, it's a new API, I guess, um, to me at least. And so um, I got in and there's some things that I thought, hey, this would be cool. And I shared that with Shalindra. And then he said, oh, cool. I'll take this back to the team and we will um, we'll introduce it. And um, that's incredible. And I'm, I'm looking forward, like it already works really well, but I'm looking forward to seeing um, what are the other things that it comes out with. Well, I know there's a lot in the pipeline. Um, I probably shouldn't speak to it as that's uh, above my pay grade, but uh, I'd just like to say thank you very much for spending time and being so enthusiastic and embracing this. It's great. Absolutely, Pete. Thanks for having me. It's been amazing. Thank you.